Hey there, Dangus2 here. In today's video, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be firing this Evinrude 150 up for the first time. I've now got all these hoses attached properly, so a big thanks to Jared and Tony for helping out there in particular, along with others who volunteered their help. So it's nice to know that's all sort of squared away. In the conversation around the water in the tanks, uh, I ended up sort of agreeing with people that I'm probably much better off just running with an external tank. It was something I was actually thinking of at the time when I saw that water. I'm glad they got cleaned out, but for the startup particularly, I am gonna run with an external tank. So this tank's actually brand new. There was also a bit of a conversation about octane in fuel for outboards. Because I was filling the car up at the same time, I ended up putting 98 octane in this, which has the advantage that it has a greater resistance to pre-detonation and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of happy about that, although there was some conversation around whether, because it's a slower burning fuel, whether it can sort of linger and burn past, you know, the, the power stroke. I'm not so worried about that, so I'm happy to start up on this. It's clean, then I've put 50 to 1 oil into this tank as well. Uh, someone else mentioned, which I thought was a good tip, I think I might have been wrong, sorry if I got that wrong, um, about a good shortcut for doing 50 to 1 ratios is to double it and add a zero. So in this case, it was 20 litres of fuel, so double it to 40 and then add a zero, 400 mils. So that's how I did the oil for this. I think it's a good shortcut, I like that. What I'm going to do now is just finish making this into a proper fuel line, add the, the bulb into it and then we'll get this primed into the carburetors. I'll pop this primer bowl sort of closer to the outboard end, I think, and then just use these sort of uh, V cutters for doing the fuel hose. Just use your hose clamps and uh, just making sure the bulb is going the right way with the arrow pointing towards the outboard, which is also the white end. I'll just prime this up now and have a good look for any fuel links, just to make sure it's all good in that sense. Fuel is absolutely pouring out of the seal where the bowl of this carburetor goes to the, the body of it. So I'll take this carburetor out, have a look at that bowl, see if the gasket's not seated properly or something, and then we'll put that back together. The gasket kit I had didn't have new carburetor bowl gaskets in it. So it looks like I am going to have to get one for this. I think I will try and seal it up though and push on with starting it anyway. Because I do want to just make sure that, you know, there isn't a bigger problem lurking bigger than this. I'm not particularly worried about having to take all these carburetors off and order some bowl gaskets and redo them all. Because in the comments of this last video, it's mentioned about perhaps going up one jet size both because it's now overboard and also just, it's sort of almost a recommendation for this motor anyway. So I'm gonna do a bit more homework on that first to find out what the story is, but it looks like down the track in the not too distant future, I will actually be taking all six carburetors off, redoing the gaskets and changing the jets out. So that's sort of in the future, but for now I might just see if I can get this to seal up properly and we'll sort of push on with a test start anyway. The gasket material itself doesn't look too bad, but it is very distorted, and that's why it wasn't sealing properly. So what I'm gonna do is just get all four bolts back in. It's not got any brakes or anything in it. And then before I tighten it up, I'm just gonna work on seating the gasket inside. And then once I've got it in position, that's when I'll sort of clamp it down properly. We'll see if that helps for now. Definitely a temporary measure though. That lurt does look to be seated much better now, so we'll snug this up, pop it back on and see if it holds pressure. Actually, while I'm here, this is the battery from that boat too. It was getting pretty low, been sitting in the boat for a while. So I've had that on charge overnight, so that's also good to go. So now that's fully charged, I'll take it and reinstall the battery as well. All right, no more leak now, which is good, but I do have to get rid of all that old fuel. I'll, I'm thinking I'm trying to crank this with the plugs out for the first time and fuel sitting in a lower cowling like that and any sort of HD lead disconnected is just a recipe for fire. So I'll clean that up. All right, that's all the fuel now, so that's good. 
I'll now pop the air box back on and then we'll hook the battery up. I'll pop the battery in now and then I'll turn it over with the spark plugs out. I'm going to disconnect the lanyard so that it won't get sparked. That way we don't risk burning the coils out or lighting any of this sort of remaining fuel or whatever. The reason I'm going to do that is just I figure it may just fire up, I don't know. It's got fuel, it's got spark, you know. And I want to have a bit of a listen to it first. If there's any particularly nasty noises, I'd rather investigate them rather than have them drowned out by its firing up and having any potential damage sort of amplified by it actually having running. So we'll put the battery in, turn it over, have a listen. I'm gonna go turn the water on now, even though we're not firing it up, as you crank it, the impeller is turning, so I may as well put a bit of lubrication in there. All right, no distressing grinding noises, so let's pop some plugs in. See what happens. I'm going to pop the cowling on because I believe there's another cover that goes at the top of here, and sunlight can interfere with the optical sensor on these, I'm told. So I'll whack the cowling on to help there as well. Thank God. Clearly there's a few issues. Hast idle, mixtures, all sorts of stuff. But it's together and it's running, so I'm pretty happy with that. So thanks for following along with this one. Uh, it's not quite over, as I said, we'll do the tune up, we'll get on the water. But that's it from having exploded to start it again. I think it's been fun. I think it's good to show how badly damaged a motor can be and how it can be brought back to life. In many respects, once this is sort of tuned up properly, it should be as good as it ever was. I'm not saying it was cheap. Uh, people often ask, and I think all up it was about uh, uh, sort of 2,500 for the engineer to rebore and supply the pistons. On top of that, I probably spent about another 500 on sealants and gaskets and all those kind of bits and bobs we needed, thermostats, all that sort of thing to put it back together. And we're not even quite done there, because I will get some new carburetor gaskets and I will look into rejetting it as well. But at the end of the day, it was either bin it or spend three grand and have a perfectly good 150 horsepower motor. So to me, it's actually money well spent. All right, well, take care. Uh, enjoy the last little bit of your weekend and we'll pick this one up next week. All right, see ya.